Well, good morning, everyone. Today, we're joined by Peter Edelman, Carmack Waterhouse Professor of Law and Public Policy and Faculty Director of the Center on Poverty and Inequality at our Law Center. Peter has served in all three branches of government and in the years since he joined our, our community in 1982, has become one of our most distinguished faculty. So Peter, thank you for taking the time to be with us for this conversation. It's wonderful to be with you. And I'd, I'd like to start by asking a little bit about public service, your work in advocacy in and out of government. And right here in the academy has been in the service of others, a commitment to reducing poverty has defined your career. Two years ago, you offered the Life of Learning Address at our 2019 Spring Faculty Convocation. And I recall how you opened your remarks talking about the Jewish idea of tikkun olam, to repair the world. So can you talk a little bit about how you see a commitment to service, to engage citizenship at this moment with all that we're facing as a country? Well, we certainly need ourselves, don't we? Um, and, and in all respects, uh, we have a new president uh, and barely we have a Congress uh, and uh, there's a long list of things uh, that we need uh, in the public uh, square. Um, and of course that's in the states and locally too, but it's also uh, a responsibility that we all have individually. Um, and uh, working uh, anything that we can do to make it uh, be helpful uh, at, at all levels. Uh, one of the things that, uh, so uh, I'm, uh, perhaps we'll get to that, but, but uh, what lawyers uh, should be doing. Uh, and uh, we are doing, I must say, in our city, uh, in lots of places in, in the country, um, to uh, they're paid for whatever they do, but but also uh, to help people who are perhaps going to be evicted and they need a lawyer and uh, we just need so much more. We need more money for that uh, uh, from from uh, the city council, but we uh, will never get what we need to do if we don't have people doing it on a voluntary basis. So that's one example of, of the responsibility uh, that we have. Sure, sure. Now, the Center on Poverty and Inequality has two significant initiatives focused on gender justice and on economic security and opportunity. Can you talk to us about the Center and some of the contributions that the Center has been able to make and how we understand and respond to these issues? Well, we're very, uh, as, a, as a, uh, a law school and as a university, I'm very uh, proud for uh, what the center uh, has grown to be. Um, it was a thought, uh, I don't know that I have a, that many thoughts, but <laughs> one I had uh, goes back uh, now uh, about 13, 14 years ago. Uh, and uh, I thought uh, it was kind of a dream that I had uh, for a long time. Uh, and some money did come along that made it possible, uh, which I'm very grateful about that. Uh, and, and so the two pieces, uh, as you say, Jack, uh, uh, one uh, is uh, the, the first one actually was more, and, and it's quite wonderful, uh, is about girls, uh, young women, uh, young women of color, uh, but just in general, uh, th that uh, there's so many things where we've thought about uh, issues for young people uh, too often from a male state, uh, that for that, uh, and when in fact there are particular things, and and we've built that up, and and uh, we uh, just uh, yesterday uh, we had a meeting uh, with uh, uh, people who are graduates of our, of our law school who've joined now uh, to be part of an advisor group, and and so we build it up, and and uh, uh, to. Uh, uh, so that people will respond and, and uh, do things that uh, give a, a better chance of, of young women. Um, and uh, on the other side, uh, we are uh, somewhat uh, 
larger now as a, as a result of, of the uh, funding that we that we have and and that's really about uh, across the core of, of, about uh, poverty and and race uh, together uh, and uh, the, the kinds of things that we know are in in, in uh, on the public side where we need to have more uh, le legislation that makes sense and and uh, uh, largely uh, for this uh, nationally, uh, and so right now uh, we're we're uh, reaching out for the new people who are coming in uh, to the White House, and and uh, I want to tell you that that the people that uh, the, the the president has brought in to the to the White House, particularly, but of course in in the departments uh, as well, uh, and these are the best people that we have in the country. Uh, who know exactly what we should be doing uh, in terms of income, in terms of education, in terms of health care, uh, in, in terms of uh, in improving, making better uh, in terms of mass incarceration. Uh, and so uh, what we're doing uh, in, in, in the center uh, is uh, we're, of course, uh, an academic uh, uh, place so so uh, we're not uh, jumping up and down of of, of uh, uh, being political about it it's about these are the things that we should be doing and and we have papers but but we also are consequently looking uh, uh, talking to people uh, both in the administration uh, and in Congress uh, to suggest uh, ideas that will move us uh, in the right direction thank you thank you now we've we've all seen how the pandemic has exposed long-standing issues of poverty and inequality. In some respects, has only deepened the problems. How are you thinking about the issues of this moment? What is it going to take to address poverty? And do you do you feel any change in how our nation might be able to respond? Very much. Uh, we there obviously uh, there's a question uh, what we could able to do uh, in terms of, of the uh, money that would. But we what this terrible situation has done is opened up so everyone can see the holes uh, for low income people. Uh, and and uh, what's happened, uh, the, the, the holes in terms of health uh in terms of terrible things of uh, evictions uh and uh, uh get uh, funding to people who've lost their their jobs uh just down the line and every one of those things uh when you look at it uh th those things were not appropriate they weren't they weren't successful they weren't doing what uh, we should have and when we come into this terrible mess that we're in now it's right there um, and so everybody who cares about this uh, needs to build uh, not only from this is what we need to help people right now, as we've done to a, to a, a part of the way, as we know, uh, and, and where we have a, a, a new statute that uh, is about to happen, I hope. And, uh, but uh, to, to what we have to learn the lessons from that. Uh, and and there there are these so many pieces where it's not just for helping people now in this situation, but to fix uh, the underlying uh, problems uh, that we have because these are structural uh, holes that we have had all the way along. Now, in 2017, you published the book "Not a Crime to Be Poor: The Criminalization of Poverty in America." where you explore a legal system in our country that for the poor can create inescapable poverty. Can you talk a little bit about, about this book, the ideas you explored and what we should be paying attention to today? We're talking about the criminal side, is that in your question? Yeah, you know, th that was such an important book. Mm -hmm. And and I think I think there's there are very important lessons that are yes, applicable. Yes, yes, yes. Um, well, uh, the uh, this is something the, uh, the criminalization of poverty, um, and and that's terminology that I don't know uh, we would hearing that. Not that I brought it in. I mean, other other people brought it out, but 
we think of, of uh, incarceration uh, correctly uh, of, of the enormous number of people who are in prison uh, and uh, for reasons in some cases are unfortunately necessary, but a lot more, uh, our whole system uh, that going back to, to really for 50 to 60 years, we just see the, the, the prisons uh, open and of course, there's a race question in there. It's so fundamental. But then we discovered, uh, particularly uh, in Ferguson, Missouri, uh, in in uh, it's now just uh, five, six years ago, uh, that within that framework, uh, I mean, we we knew about, uh, shall we say, the regular <laughs> that's a way of saying about, about uh, crime. Um, that uh, in, in uh, state after state and in communities or uh, counties, cities, uh, uh, people were uh, thrown in into uh, jails uh, and, and prisons uh, for minor kinds of things uh, were actually uh, a, a racket. Uh, that uh, you go back to, to uh, President Reagan uh, and they decided we shouldn't have cat taxes anymore. Uh, and so particularly uh, not to give any, any uh, 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 that we did this thing that we had to do because it was awful for people. I mean, we have uh, this especially about people who lose their uh, drive driving uh, licenses are taken away uh, for not, not a necessary thing, not, not something where there was somebody da dangerously uh, uh, driving uh, and uh, it's to get money. Uh, and uh, people individually, uh, particularly people with low income kind of didn't understand that this was a national problem. Uh, and related to that was the understanding, which we're beginning to understand about money bail, uh, which is a way of, of holding people in, in jail when they hadn't even uh, been found guilty. Um, so all of that, I wrote about that. And, and uh, there are, again, I don't take any credit, but, but it's people are paying attention to it. There are new organizations that work on these things and they do litigation and they do uh, legislation. And then we find out that uh, in terms of, of uh, the, the criminalization of poverty, it goes uh, to, uh, issues of, of uh, homelessness, as an example, uh, the way we deal with mental health, um, just on and on, uh, there are ways that things that should be handled in, in uh, a non-criminal basis, and we've been doing that, and we're still doing that. So um, I, I hope I made some contribution about that book. Thank you, thank you. Now we, we've just launched our spring semester and I know that you're teaching a course on income and public benefits. Yes. Talk, tell, tell us a little about your course and what are some of the areas that you're planning to explore with your students? Everything. <laughs> uh, I, I, have, I have now, which I, I'm very pleased, uh, two uh, classes uh, about poverty and race. Uh, one, I've been doing a seminar I've been doing for forever. Um, and and uh, it's a, all year long, and you have field placements, and and uh, uh, so I thought that's all I thought we needed. I mean, we needed a thousand more, but but uh, uh, it, it turns out in the last two years that students have been saying uh, that they, they it's a big thing to go in because it's the ten credits, and you know, uh, and they don't have the so uh, it's a three credit course, and uh, it's really true, uh, these are people who have an interest, a largely public interest uh, it, to, to be uh, lawyers one way or another, um, but uh, cutting across, because when you ask yourself uh, why people are poor, that's a long list of things. Um, 
and and so uh, we're looking at uh, all of that walking through and and uh, in fact the reason uh, i was a little bit uh, late with you this morning because i was reading about uh, the is is uh, elizabethan <laughs> time about exactly the subject and uh, i got I jumped in and didn't forget, <laughs> I forgot where i was uh so that's what that's what we're doing, and uh, I do it in a way that's that's uh, partly what I know, uh, and uh, I also uh, this is Washington. You know, we can get all these fabulous people. Of course, now with with uh, Zoom, we can get people from California too to come and talk. <laughs> uh, I had uh, the the uh, chief of staff uh, from California uh, as a friend, uh, and. Uh, she was the first one uh, th this year. That's in the se seminar. Um, so uh, they told me the students said last year uh, that they liked it, and then I do have a somewhat larger group this year, and that that feels good. But it's it's across the so some people know a lot about housing, or they know uh, about uh, particular issues uh, about uh, the criminal side and so on. And it turns out that there's, they know that, but they don't know the whole frame. And that's what we're doing. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I can't thank you enough for joining us this morning. As, as, as we begin this spring semester in closing, is there a message that you'd like to share with our community? Well, I always say uh, to people, uh, organize. Um, and that means that at, at so many levels, uh, you know, uh, with this this last year in terms of this horrible uh, political time that we had that has come out well, particularly the two senators from uh, Georgia, uh, which was a miracle, uh, really. But look at, at uh, Georgia. I mean, that would not have happened if people were out doing, doing. Uh, and doing uh, to to get those two people uh, in the United States Senate. So that's my that's my message. Thank you, thank you, Peter, and thank you for all that you've meant to our community over the course of four decades now. Deeply grateful to you for your your incredible contributions to our university and to our nation for the service and leadership that you have modeled for all of us. So thank you. And I look forward to being with all of you again soon. Take care of yourselves and take care of everyone around you for every Hoya everywhere.